So if you want to do this lesson along with me, you need to go to Kidum. And if you click that load more button at the bottom, then you'll be able to see these two assignments, lesson one sonnet introduction and lesson two sonnet comparison. The, um, the grades on Skyward that equate to these say paraphrase for my mistress's eyes and paraphrase for when I see the clock. And or it might just say clocks, because there are two different Shakespeare poems that we paraphrased two weeks ago, and a lot of you are still missing them. That's why I thought I would do this video or this um, makeup lesson to try to help you get that done. So they both really look the same, and so I'm going to go through one of them with you, and then you just need to do the same thing on the other one. Both of them are a Word document. I'll go ahead and open the other one too. And I'm going to show you, we really ended up only, I only took a grade on one particular part of this. So the other benefit of being on this lesson or watching this video is that you will realize that you don't have to turn in the whole thing because we didn't get that far in class. So the documents say sonnet analysis and sonnet analysis two. And they have the very same setup and it takes the activity takes place in two parts. The first thing that you're going to need to do is read the sonnet. And so for this one, my mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet by heaven, I think my love is rare as any she be lied with false compare. So step one, as it shows you on here, is to find the words that you don't know the meanings of and look them up. So depending on what you recognize or not, a lot of people wanted to look up the word done and the word damasked. And you might not know the meaning of the word reeks or um, several people looked up the word treads. So, um, and belied, you're probably going to want to look up as well. And so that's step one is to look those up. Then the next thing you have down here is a paraphrase box. And what I'm going to recommend that you do is to, you can kind of duplicate this. Actually, here's the way I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna look up the poem online since that way I can look at it while I'm doing the paraphrase. And you use the words that you looked up in order to help you paraphrase it. One of the things we talked about in class is that this kind of paraphrase, this is not a word by word translation. And as we're going through Shakespeare, I'm gonna ask you to do both of those. Sometimes I'll say, translate this from Shakespearean. And so that's when you're going to use that vocab sheet that I have in the Kidham classroom to help you know what he's saying. But in this case, I'm just asking you to paraphrase. So you don't have to write it word for word. You're just going to write what it means. And so in class, we said, well, what's a mistress? A mistress is um, a wife or a lover, perhaps. So you might say, my lover's eyes. And then we said, what does it mean that they are nothing like the sun? All those words make sense to us, but we need to break down that simile. What's he saying? If her eyes are nothing like the sun, then he's saying that her eyes are not very bright. Or you might say her eyes don't shine. 
And then you move through the poem just doing the same thing. Your lines are gonna be a lot shorter than Shakespeare's lines. So um, coral is far more red than her lips red. Her lips are paler than coral. And if you need to look up coral, you can. It's like a coral reef. It's something that grows in the ocean. And so you go through each step after those. The word damasked just kind of means in a pattern. So this one in line five would mean I have seen roses with a red and white pattern. And so I'm not gonna do every single line of these because that's what your grade is coming from is that you're going through and doing these. The ones at the bottom, I will do the couplet or parts of the couplet with you because it can be kind of confusing. First of all, you can tell that Shakespeare's not saying very nice things here about his lover. He's saying that her eyes aren't very bright, her lips are pale, she doesn't have rosy cheeks. She has like her breath reeks, which means it smells really bad. So he's not being especially kind to his lover. But then at the end of the poem, he explains why. And that's what the couplet does. The couplet, uh -oh. the couplet is going to explain the whole poem. It's going to reveal the mystery or kind of conclude the meaning of the poem. And so in the couplet, he has a turn. We talked about that. So he says, um, yet, which kind of means, but I think, and so he's talking about his lover. My lady is as rare, is like unique or special. And then you get down here to the last line, as any she, a she is a woman. So he thinks his love is just as special as any other woman. Belied with false compare. Belied means, um, really it means to lay something upon, so to heap something upon someone. So any other woman, um, Falsely, that word does not look like I spelled it right. Falsely compared. Um, and so I'm gonna explain this line to you because we talked about how sonnets are usually written about women and they usually praise them. Oh, this woman is like a goddess. Her hair flows and is as golden as the sun. And when she speaks, it's like the songs of angels. But Shakespeare is breaking from tradition here. And he's saying, look, I've never seen a goddess, but I'm pretty sure my lady is human. She's human. Sometimes she has bad breath. Sometimes she forgets to put on lipstick. And then at the end, he says, but I love her just as much as all those women that the other poets are lying about. And so he calls out their comparisons as lies. Um, this is why in the little dialogue that I wrote about this as an example for your sonnet project, I was talking about how, and, and Mr. Newsom's as well, this is very similar to how you might say, yeah, look, girls don't look like the girls in magazines, but I love my girlfriend just as much as any girl I see in a magazine. And that's basically what Shakespeare's saying with this poem. And that's all you have to turn in. All you have to turn in is this paraphrase. So if it's easier for you to do it on paper and just write down the 14 line paraphrases, then that's what, then just take a picture of it and turn it into Kittim. If it's easier for you to type it and upload a file, then you can turn it in that way. I know that's tricky to do on Kittim. Make sure that you save it with a different file name and that will make sure that it doesn't upload blank. And so then I wanna show you that the other one is the same way. Did I already open it? No. Um, the sonnet analysis two. That must've been the first one. 
This is the same way. And it's got two sets of poems on there. But guys, we only turned in the Shakespeare one. We didn't have time to do the Keats. And so we kind of broke it up and each of us just did a couple of lines. But you don't have to turn that one in. All you have to turn in is the paraphrase of the Shakespeare one. And you have to go down a little bit to get to the paraphrase paper. But remember, you can write it on paper if you want to. So ultimately, the two grades that I'm looking for are a paraphrase of my mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun, which is also known as sonnet 130. And I'm looking for a paraphrase of when I do count the clock that tells the time or sonnet 12. 